Today I'm going to show you how I make a piggy bank. I have here an example of one with a broken ear, poor thing, and um, I use this as my model. I don't make every single one the same because I want them all to he each have their own personality, but um, I need it. I, I, what I did one day is uh, measure out the width of this one, and I bought a bunch of corks that I have here. And um, they're slightly different in size and width over here, so that if I make a slightly different size piggy bank, because it's never it's hard to be completely exact, then a different, you know, then I could use the narrower or the wider cork. So to get that measurement, I took a ruler and I measured the inside width of the piggy bank. It's about two inches. And then I took my shrink ruler, and this clay that I use shrinks about 14%. So I, I took my the side that's 14%, and using calipers, I measured two inches on with the calipers on the ruler. And then now this width here is the width that I'm trying to achieve for the um, opening of the, of the piggy bank, where the cork will go. So basically what you're making is a kind of a fat vase with a wide opening or with a two inch opening. So, and I lost my fudge again. How did that happen? Oh, there it is. So you open it up and we always compress, compress that base. I don't like those S cracks. And because this this, I'm not going to trim, a, you know, you're not trimming a foot or anything into the base. I opened this to the thickness that I want the base to be, so I don't have to do any trimming. I started with about um, two pounds of clay. Uh, you could, you know, use more or less depending on what size piggy bank you want, but I figured out for me that's the size that works. So now I'm going to start by just making the cylinder. I want to make sure to not widen the top at all because I am going to actually make it narrower, so it's important to keep it on the narrower side. Otherwise, it's more of a pain to make it narrow. One more pull, and I always um, compress the rim on every pull. I'm going to clean up my cylinder a little bit of all those throwing lines. Everything's covered in clay. <laughs> so I'm just taking a straight wooden rib and going up the side to clean it. All right. Now I'm going to collar in the top just a little bit, not the whole. Um, amount that it's going to be collared in, but just enough so that I can give it some definition of where the, the uh, collared in part will be as I widen out the, the body of the, of the piece. All right, and I do want to leave enough room for my hand to get in there. So now um, you can do this with ribs or you can use a throwing stick you could use a stiff rib like a stiff yellow rib or you could use a red rib um, or you could use what i'm going to do is a metal rib i don't know why but i like doing this with a metal rib you could also um, you could do this by doing it putting the rib on the inside or on the outside i'm going to take this metal rib curve it a little bit in my hand 
and push from the inside towards the rib on the outside. So what I'm trying to do, push out the cylinder in such a way that the center of the cylinder is the widest part and that it's narrower as it goes from the center to the top or bottom of the cylinder. I think I need to color this in just a tiny bit more. Get a little more definition. All right. Now, how much you push the cylinder out depends on how fat or long you want your piggy bank to be. And I actually find this part to be the hardest part because this is when you're deciding what the piggy bank body is going to look like. And it's kind of hard to see when you're when it's on its side like this. So if you're having trouble, either look at it this way, you know, look at it on its side, um, or actually take it off the wheel and turn it on its side if that's easier for you. Well, I'm going to make this one a little bit fatter. And right now my wheel is a little too fast, so I should slow it down a bit. So I think I said this earlier, I like everyone to be just a little bit different, so I don't try to make the shape the same. I want them all to be, um, each piggy bank to be different and have its own personality. So now I'm going to collar in to try to get to that two inches with the calipers. That's still a little wide. Let's measure. Oh yeah, it's way too wide. Nope, and now it's too narrow. Okay. Now remember, you want it to be the right width all the way down because the cork's got to go in. Um, and stay in because you want all the money to fall out. All right, now let's just do a little bit of refining to the shape. Get our metal rib again. So I'm going to actually leave this on the bat to dry. And when it's at that leather hard stage, I'm going to trim it right side up. So the base, even though the base looks kind of fat right now, I am going to narrow it as I trim it. And now I threw this off a little. So I'm going to make sure this is round. The corks are pretty forgiving. They, you know, they're narrow to wide. And usually I, one of the corks I have will fit. So I don't worry about it too much. But there have been times when I've had to shave a cork a little bit because I made it too narrow. Okay, so the very last thing I'm going to do is just do a quick trim with a wooden knife on the bottom. And then I'm going to take a look, make sure this is... The shape is what I'm, what I want. So I'm going to turn it on its side and see how it looks. Oops. Okay. That looks pretty good, except it's kind of soft and it's sliding over, so you've got to be careful of that. I mean, the good thing is this is not going to be, it's not, it doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to actually flatten out part of it and play with it a little bit to to get the shape where we want it. All right, well that was part one and now we have to let them dry for a bit before we can go on to the next part. So the piggy bank body has been drying overnight and it's at the point where it's Kind of that pre-leather hard. It's not going to really move much, but it's not um, too dry yet. And I'm going to just do a little bit of trimming. I left it on the bat, so I'm trimming right side up. I'm going to start just so that I can shape it properly. I start kind of at the center and then head down. But 
most of the clay I'm taking off is down here at the base. And what I'm trying to do is get the, you know, get it to be like a rounded, rounded shape and have the, have it, have the base be about the same width as the top. So as you can see, it's not too much that I'm taking off. And I'm going to take my wooden trimming tool and just clean it up a little. Take that extra little bit off the bottom. And then you can either use a red rib or a metal rib to smooth out the trimming where the trimming raised the grog. That is if you have a grog. So I, you don't have to do this stuff if you don't want to, but I have grog in my clay, so I'm going to do that. Then I'm going to cut it. And the base is still a little bit wet, but I'm going to smooth out the rough edges with my finger. You might have to wait a tiny bit. This is still, as I said, a little wet, but I want to give you an idea of what to do at this point. And then, yeah, it's a little wet on this one. Anyway, you can clean this up a bit when you, however you want to smooth it out. And then the last thing we're going to do right now before we put it aside to dry a little longer is to figure out where figure out where I want the top of the pig to be and it's not, not really that hard a choice because it's all pretty uniform and I'm going to take it I'm going to just pat it and flatten out a section and that's where the um, feet will be so we'll attach feet here and a tail here and the eyes and the ears and that will be our piggy bank and of course we'll cut a part for the top but I'll show you that in the next section.